Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And I hope you are as fired up as I have been the last several days, because if you're listening live right now, we just finished up what's called the Shift Retreat. Yeah, the Shift Retreat. Matter of fact, I'm wearing my Shift Happens shirt. It's camo green. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're listening in on any of the platforms. Uh, I got my camo green impact shirt on. And uh, I'm going to come back with a download of the entire shift retreat at another time, a future episode. Um, but let me tell you what, as I record today's episode just prior to the shift retreat, I got to tell you, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. We've got about 120 people coming in from all over the, the country. Well, literally all over the world, actually. And uh, whoo, I, I am like chomping at the bit. I'm fired up. And I, uh, I almost want to talk about the shift retreat today, but I can't yet. So I'll download that in a future episode. But I do want to ask you this question because I've been getting the question. TD, you've been on the road a ton lately. Uh, You've been speaking, you've been traveling. Yes, I have, and I couldn't be more excited. My soul is singing, not just because the upcoming shift retreat, but in the last, let's say, four or five weeks, I've been on the road a ton, and I've been keynoting, I've had different events, and uh, man, oh man, I want to actually today, I'm going to share about seven lessons learned, not necessarily what I talked about, but from the periphery of some of these talks, I always glean something unique and interesting. So we're going to have a little chit chat today, a little, a little coffee talk, a little protein talk uh, here as you uh, get fired up for your week. And I'm going to ask you just a few questions. Number one, what gets your soul singing? What gets your soul singing? Two, how do you maximize your impact? What are you doing to maximize your impact? And the third question is, what are your top five gifts, skills, superpowers, or even roles that you love doing? Like you have to include this in your life. It's part of your DNA. It's part of who you are. Speaking is one of mine. That's one of the reasons why I love the podcast. I get to speak. Well, it's not the same as going up in front of, you know, 100 or 500 or 1,000 people. I love speaking because we're reaching thousands of people with each and every episode. And I love when I hear from you on these episodes. But I love speaking. I love coaching. I'll always be a coach. I'll be the I'll be a coach to the day I die. I love speaking. I love writing. I love all my family time. I love leading. These are some of the ones that I love to do. And I share those questions with you because I want to amp up your spirit and energy today. I want to amp up the impact that you're doing today in your specific role, industry, or career that you do. And I want to make sure you're focusing your time on the things that matter most. Can I get an amen to that? Anybody? It's just me and you today. Mono a mono, mono a a, a woman o. Uh, we're gonna have a little chit chat as you smile along because I have been traveling a lot. I've been speaking a lot, and I'm gonna just uh, go through these seven different uh, events, conferences, or keynotes that I've been involved with. Uh, all post Labor Day. All post Labor Day. So a little four plus weeks here uh, on that. The first one I was in Cancun, Mexico. Cancun, Mexico. Yeah, don't feel bad for me. We had an awesome conference uh, for U.S. Fitness. Uh, their their brand primarily in the southeast, uh, often known as One Life Fitness. If you're in the southeast, specifically Atlanta, coastal Virginia, DC Metro in the house. <laughs> I had the chance to keynote this. Um, and I loved the energy and connection in the room. So as I share my seven lessons uh, with seven keynotes in these four weeks or so, one of the things that I loved doing was being in the room to hear the founders and C-suite executives speak to the 300 fit pros in the room. They talked economics. They talked fitness industry trends. Um, Kirk, John, and Ori did an amazing job. One of the reasons, and there's a lesson, that I love to sit in on when the president or CEO or founder gets to speak to the group is you get to hear the overarching message that they're trying to reach their attendees with. That allows me as the keynoter to actually uh, reinforce and reemphasize the key points. And some of the things I heard was, you know, there, there are so many great opportunities in the health and fitness industry right now. 
Yes, there are. Hence, that's why I came out with my What's Next book just a week ago as I record this. Uh, you've got to maniacally focus on your clients and members now. you got to keep the experience great. Heck, I don't care what industry we're, we're, we're talking about today. Customer service is king. And it's so lacking in so many industries today. We must so focus on our customer and client experiences, whatever industry you're in. I don't care if you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're an attorney, you're a teacher, like whatever it is you do, whether you're at whether you're at a retail shop, like I was yesterday and had a horrific experience. I almost like I thought I was doing the person a disservice for being there. Uh, like this can't be the way we're going. Customer service, right? So maniacally focus on that experience. Um, but the one thing, the one lesson that I want to share that is ubiquitous for all of us is this. One person can change the energy of a club. One person can change the energy of a club. Now, I love when they said that because what I was able to do with the 300 plus people was to go deep on who is the one person in the room who's going to change the energy of your club or your business or your shop. So whatever industry that you're in, whatever school, university that you attend, whatever team that you're on, who's the one person that's going to change the energy, the culture, the experience within that organization? I love that. And I really honed in on that is who is the one? Well, got to be honest with you. Um, when that talk was done, that keynote that I shared was done, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. And I was speaking to some kindred spirits in there because let me tell you what, I was emotionally exhausted after that because I gave it my all. And the, I'll say dozens, but it was probably hundreds of people who I talked to after that event was, man, we needed that. We needed that fire and brimstone talk to make sure that you know we can go back and fire up our people. Yes, indeed, that is the truth. But my question for you is, who is the one person who's listening today that can change the energy, the thermostat of your business, of your organization, of your school, of your office, of your retail shop? Is it you? And if so, I want to know who is that one person person. Second, second event was actually my own event. It was my What's Next book event. We had uh, in the What's Next, if you uh, listened to that podcast a few weeks ago, What's Next, I had a, an event for the 27 other offers. It's a collaborative book. Uh, all of the proceeds of What's Next go to my Durkin Impact Foundation so we could give back Thank you all who have already purchased the book and are getting great value out of the book. If you have not yet purchased the book, please do too. Please do, do go to toddurkin.com. Please do get the book and know that it's great content, 28 leading experts in the world, and yours truly, of course, uh, sharing their trends, predictions, and what you can do to amp up your own energy, light, positivity, optimism, and health, vitality, fitness, and performance. Um but what I want to share is this, and maybe it'll pertain to you and maybe it won't, but this is just a fireside chat today on the power of collaboration. We hit number one in nine different categories on Amazon. Nine. We're actually one short of 10. We need 10. So keep them coming, please. Uh, I just thought about that. We need one more to get 10. But the power of collaboration. 28 folks sharing that on their platforms and, and doing great things. The power of collaboration and, of course, again, a live event. But I'll also share this. Marketing never stops. If you produce anything, a book, a podcast, a product that you have, you sell something, you can never share your story enough. Your story around the product or your story around the book. Um, what I often find is, at least with authors, is many times they put their heart and soul, their blood, sweat, and tears into the, the project, the book, 
And then when they're done, they don't have a platform to sell it on. They only have, you know, a 50 or a hundred, a couple hundred people, which is fine. But if you want to actually reach more people, you've got to develop that platform or you've got to figure out the best ways to market that as well. And that was one of the things that we talked about at the live one day event here, the what's next uh, book event is you got to continually market your product, whatever your product is. So if you have a product or you have a project that you want to get out, make sure you collaborate with other people who can help you get that out there. And the What's Next book is a great example of the collaborative effort. And also when you put an altruistic purpose behind it, like we're giving back 100% of the proceeds for a great cause to help those in need, that's even better and deeper. The third event and the lesson gleaned from this, maybe you heard um, my recent episode. It was episode 271, uh, six things I would tell my younger self. If you listened to that podcast last week, it was from chapel at Christian high school. So I'm not going to regurgitate what I shared in that chapel. You heard the whole thing, or if you have not yet, go back and listen to it because it's six things I would tell my younger self. Now, I've been going to chapel and speaking at chapel there for over five years. I've developed a relationship with a lot of the faculty, the teachers, administrators, and many of the students and athletes at Christian High School. Over 800 kids were present. But here's what I want to share in the lesson. It's similar to um, U.S. Fitness and hearing Kirk, John, and Ori speak. But uh, here's what I want to share in this. The importance of preparation to reemphasize and reinforce what you're going to say of what's going on within these walls that I need to know about. So in me prepping for that chapel, I really wanted to know what are the pain points of many of the students? What's going on that you're hearing at an administrative level that I can help address? And one of the things that the director of that chapel shared with me is a lot of these kids, a lot of our kids are going through uh, parents who are getting either separated or divorced. I said, tell me more. Tell me more about that. And he shared about many of these kids feel guilty that like, it's their fault that their parents are getting divorced. And we're not going to go into it today about all of the reasons why, but some of the reasons why with the pandemic and people getting away from their faith and relying on their own strength and all of those things. The bottom line is this, divorces are up. So what I wanted to do was double down on my messaging, if you heard 271, is on divorce because my parents were divorced when I was five years old. And as the youngest of eight kids, it certainly is a tough challenging time as a kid. I don't care what age you are. If you're five, you're 10, you're 15. Heck, if you're in your 20s and your parents get divorced, it's hard. It's challenging, right? For those of you who have, have had parents who get divorced, you know that. Why is it important I share that? Is because for me, hearing the pain points of the kids, I was able to hang in that space a little bit longer. And the juice, the nectar always happens after the talk. So you heard the talk, the chapel in episode 271, but really the real impact was after the talk when I probably had a dozen kids stick around and want to talk to me. Guess what they want to talk about? Yup. The challenges they were going through at home and their parents who are separated are going through a divorce. My friends today, maybe you're that mom or dad who is going through a divorce. I get it. I understand. Maybe you're a kid listening in today and you're like, man, TD, you're, you're speaking, you're, you're speaking to me right here. I just want to impart the wisdom for anyone who is speaking to make sure you understand the temperature in the room, the hot points in the room, and make sure you go there. Run to the heat. Run to where it's hot. Run to where the pain points are that no one else wants to talk about. So for me, I was able to talk about the power of prayer in getting through the tough times in life. In chapel, I, I gave some scripture verses about this as well and, and how trials and tribulations uh, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you go through trials of any kind. Yes, even divorce. So I share with you today is, 
Know who's in the know. Get to know who your audience is and what their pain points are and speak to that as well. So that's number three. Number four, I found myself over in Minneapolis, Minnesota, keynoting for Royal Bank of Canada, the wealth management division. Like, wait, chapel one one minute, the Royal Bank of Canada, uh, a fitness event. Yep. I've been speaking to more and more folks outside of fitness, specifically in the financial services industry, financial advisors, banks, uh, different companies um, that deal with financial service. And I love it. I've been finding I love it. We talk about like, what do you love to do? It's not just reaching audiences I've always reached, but it's reaching new audiences and doing keynotes and Royal Bank of Canada. Um, man, it was an awesome experience. Now, this is like teaching uh, and speaking to the Green Berets, the wealth management division, because the folks who I had the opportunity to speak with that day in keynote for an all day event, actually on my talk, which was about impact. And um, I got to sit in with the CEO of the Royal Bank of Canada, and also the president of the company in that division. Folks, heavy hitters. They're managing, I'll just say billions of dollars with a B. And here I am uh, giving wisdom to all of these folks who help their financial advisors be successful. Now, I'm not going to reveal all of the things that I shared. The point I want to share in the lesson, again, is in the power of listening to the CEO or the president or the founders speak to their people prior to you speaking. And if you don't get a chance to listen in, you come in for a keynote, then it's getting to know that as well so you can reemphasize that. But one of the things I heard to these 70 men and women who will be dealing with financial advisors um, was uh, it might be a murky six to 18 months economically, right? There's talks of recession and all these different things going on economically. So while it might be murky, remember, we're built to play for the next three to five years. I got goosebumps. I literally got goosebumps of, hey, it's expected that it's going to be tough sometimes. When I was hearing the CEO say, it's going to be murky, but we're not just built for the murky times. We're built to last and built to get through this. I literally got goosebumps because what he shared next was you got to motivate and inspire your people. Now, this was like getting fuel for the fire. Why? Because one of my messages was exactly that. That's why I was brought in from San Diego to Minneapolis to speak to these people who actually motivate and inspire thousands of advisors. You know why? It's because how the heck are you supposed to motivate and inspire people if you ain't inspired yourself? So point number four, as I do air quotes, is you have to be motivated, inspired yourself and put on your oxygen mask on. So as you amp up your own extreme personal care, you can then go motivate, inspire people. But it starts with you. Because if you stink, then all your other people are going to stink because you can't afford to be average. You can't afford to be mediocre. You can't afford to just show up and do your job. No, no, no. Not in today's murky times. Today, you got to show up as your best. Now, this is why all you mind right maniacs, fire breathing dragons are listening to the Tyler Can Impact show right now because I'm getting a little heated myself, a little fired up myself. <laughs> I literally, I'm speaking to you. Yup, you have to be motivated, inspired, and hopefully this specific episode, like all other 271 previous episodes, fires your little tail up. And I'll end with this on the RBC, Minneapolis Wealth Management Division. CEO Michael Armstrong said something that I have been waking up in the middle of the night saying, that was brilliant. I'm going to share it with you today. And I'll quote this brother for a long time. Michael Armstrong quote, keeping it simple is amazingly complex. <laughs> Let me repeat. because You're like, whoa, that's good. Keeping it simple is amazingly complex. Yeah, we all know the old kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. 
Yeah, we all need to simplify our lives, simplify our businesses, but it's complex to do that, right? Keeping it simple is amazingly complex. The million, the billion dollar question is, how do we simplify so that we can actually go out and do what we do best? Keeping it simple is amazingly complex. That lesson right there, all from Royal Bank of Canada, that is worth the price of the podcast alone. Oh, wait, it's free. That's right. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I'm having some fun today, my friends. Uh, number five out of seven, I was down in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, I was like all over the place, hopping from, from, the, from the northeast to the northwest to Minneapolis, down to the southeast here, Tampa, Florida, the Vertimax Summit. I loved the Vertimax Summit. Uh, I've been using the Vertimax uh, platform for uh, over 20 years, I'll say that. And uh, the founder of the Vertimax, Michael Worrell, interestingly enough, I happened to run into when he was designing it in 1995, when I was in Atlanta, Georgia, at Massage Therapy School, at a Kinkos. Yeah, I said Kinkos. Does anyone else remember Kinkos? I was at a Kinko's late night doing a massage, a paper on massage therapy because I didn't have a laptop. I don't even know if laptops existed then. Uh, <laughs> now I'm really showing the age. But many of you remember Kinko's. I ran into Michael Worrell. He was designing the Vertimax jump chainer, trainer at the time. Well, fast forward many moons. Here I am keynoting the Vertimax Summit. And um, what I loved about keynoting this and it was every bit of an hour. I needed about two hours um, to keynote because I was speaking to coaches, trainers, life transformers um, who are in the trenches training uh, people, changing lives. Is Here's my lesson that I take took away from the Vertimax Summit. That evening after the keynote, I can't tell you the number of people who came up to me and said, hey, Todd, I read every book that you've that you've you've written i've listened to your podcast just about every one you've been my mentor for so many years and i didn't even know who they were i didn't know their name i, I don't remember seeing them if i'd ever seen them or met them but it made me think about something you just never know who you are mentoring touching or impacting it made me think myself out of the I don't even know. It, it was a handful of people came up to me and shared something either from the pandemic or something from 2015 or 2010 after the Impact Body Plan came out. And I scratched my head that night thinking, I wonder how many people are like that. I wonder how many people are like the dozen people or so that said, hey, I know we've never met, but you've been impacted me. My friends today listening to this episode, if that's one of you, I would really love to know. I would love to know that you listen into the Impact Show or you read the What's Next book or the Get Your Mind Right book or the Wow book or the Impact Body Plan because sometimes you don't know. And one of the love languages I speak, words of affirmation, is I love when I get words that, hey, I, I listen to the show or I, I read the books. Hey, if nothing else, please do me a favor. Please share these episodes. I want to make sure that the world proliferates with more energy and positivity and optimism and impact. Go back to, to episodes one and two. Go back to episodes one and two if you're a new time listener to the Todd Durkin Impact Show podcast because I share what really is impact about. Go, let's step back 272 episodes and go back. But I got to tell you, my heart and soul was singing that evening, going to going to bed thinking, I wonder how many people are out there that I don't know who, who have been impacted through the podcast or through an event, through a conference, uh, through a keynote. And um, when I talk about the five things that you love to do or the five gifts, uh, the five roles that you have, one of them is speaking, the other one is writing, right? Is you just never know. But to me, that really is oxygen to my soul. Number six, number six out of seven, uh, this was cool. Came back to San Diego. I went old school. 
got on a camo green and did a boot camp workout on the beach for a corporate event. A corporate boot camp on the beach uh, with a company called Odyssey Investments. They're, they're a group of uh, VCs, venture capitalists out of Long Island and LA, New York and LA. And um, man, my good friend Craig Staub is spearheading that effort. And he said, hey, Todd, we got a group of VCs who would love to get out there and do a little a little team building. But we got to sweat a little bit. We got to compete a little bit. And, you know, we got 30s and 40s and 50-year-olds. Yeah, we got some 20-somethings as well, but we need a little something special. We need a little impact special. I said, Stobby, you got the man that can do that. Next thing we know, we're on the beaches of Del Mar, swinging kettlebells, hitting the dumbbells, going through ladders and cone drills. <laughs> it was it was an epic, epic event. My takeaway to share with you is sometimes you got to get away with your team and celebrate the wins. Because if you don't celebrate the wins, the wins might stop happening. Let me repeat that. Sometimes you got to step away from the trenches. Whether you're a VC firm, you're an advisor firm, you're a bank, you're, you, you, you run a law firm, you got to get away and you got to go get some either mellow yellow time, you got to get some fun time, adventure time, you got to celebrate. And whether you're doing a corporate boot camp or not, the bottom line is this, you got to celebrate. Now, truth be told, truth be told, over the years, I could have done a better job with this because maybe you're like me. You know, you get a win and you're like, okay, what's next? <laughs> what's next? There's the book. What's next? What's next? Part of the message in the book is let's slow down. Let's be in it now. Let's celebrate the successes and the significances that we are creating and we're having. Uh, maybe, maybe the podcast for us as a TDE team is growing. Hey, team. There's about five of us that work on a podcast episode. Yeah, five. It's not just me. I need a lot of hair and makeup. <laughs> That's why I got a hat on if you're watching, right? It takes a team. It takes a team of people editing and listening and uh, proliferating the message. For you, maybe you are a one person, a one man or a one woman show. Thank you. Congratulations for trying to do it all. But you have a spouse or a significant other, or a kid who's who's lighting you up with some encouragement, some inspiration, or you got a coach or a, a mentor who is who is coaching you through this. You got a team, Odyssey Investments. Great job in leading the way by celebrating what has been uh, an illustrious uh, year thus far of 2022. Remember, folks, if you don't celebrate your wins, you may soon stop winning. Celebrate your wins. And the last one I want to share today uh, as, as, as I prepare for the shift retreat, because again, today's episode is not about the shift retreat. As you're listening to this, the shift retreat uh, has just concluded. I'm probably face down on my bed trying to recover from uh, three plus days of absolute energy expenditure as you listen to this. Um, but it happened just a few days ago. I was in San Antonio, Texas, keynoting 800 plus people for a franchise called Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa. I said 800 people, 550 plus franchisees showing up in a ballroom for yours truly talking about energy amplified. Now, it was epic, iconic. Like when you talk about what makes your soul sing, when I asked you the question in the beginning, what makes your soul sing? What are you doing to maximize your impact? I know there's 550 plus franchisees, 800 people that were in that room and tens of thousands of people who will take that energy and impact message back to their, their specific hand in stone franchise back whatever city, state, country that they're in and proliferate that, it was awesome. But you know what my message is for you today on the podcast? While it was energy, how to live your best life now, because it's all about energy, and uh, go back to my my social media to, to just see uh, some of the lessons. The takeaway I'm going to share with you today actually, once again, comes from 
after the talk. The CEO, John Teza, who I've known for a long time. John Teza grew up uh, in my hometown in Jersey. Brick, shout out to all Brickites. Followed me to William & Mary. Had a, an incredible career at William & Mary. Was a standout football player. And then John Teza, he had uh, he got into the franchising world and worked for Quiznos. Y'all remember Quiznos subs for a long time? And then he made the jump over to Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's, you know, Pete, who started Jersey Mike's. Um, well, he didn't start it. He actually was behind the counter uh, working for Jersey Mike's and then bought it uh, as a young man. I got to have Pete, uh, founder of Jersey Mike's, on the podcast. Now, that, there you go. Um, but John Tezza was working for Jersey Mike's and then he actually uh, went and uh, took this CEO role of hand and stone massage and facial, had lunch with John. And we were talking about how to get to the next level. <laughs> Imagine that, <laughs> how to get to the next level. Here, John is running, you know, 550 franchises at the CEO, chief energy officer, that is. Uh, <laughs> that's what I call it. And um, we were just talking deep talk. And to let you in on the conversation a little bit at lunch, because it was the highlight beside the actual keynote for me, um, we got talking about different ways to elevate your own business and what you could do to get better. Because I was enamored with how do you get better when you've got, you know, 500 plus franchisees and, and what can you do? And we got talking about agencies and consultancies. And, you know, I've never been a huge uh, advocate of having an agency as a small business. We are a small business. Um, sorry, all you agencies. I was like, man, I don't know. You know, you hear about PR agencies and marketing agencies and social media agencies and all these things. It's like, you know, I was talking to John at the end of the day, whether it's a thousand dollars a month or twenty five hundred dollars a month or five thousand dollars a month, is what's the ROI? How do you how do you know the ROI? And John said something that. Uh, I'll never forget. He said, you know, if you get the right ones, they look at your company with fresh eyes. See, if you've been the one driving it yourself or you have been the CMO yourself for five years or 10 years or 20 years, then you see everything as the same because it's the same thing. Yeah, you got to continue to grow, but sometimes it helps to actually get some fresh eyes. And yes, you can look at things differently through a new fresh lens. And then he said something that was like, whoa. He said, one of the things that I've learned in my experience in multiple franchises from Quiznos to Jersey Mike's to now Hand and Stone is you got to simplify to amplify. You got to simplify to amplify. <laughs> My friends, when I when I when I share today like seven lessons really <laughs> about probably 20 in this one uh from seven different keynotes over the last 4 weeks, I've had some incredible conversations. I've been part of some amazing experiences and events. It's one of the reasons why I love not like getting out and keynoting and firing people up, but having the opportunity to rub elbows with all these CEOs and influential people, people, men and women who are thinking on a different plane. Simplify to amplify. I'm like, huh, what is that worth? <laughs> Armstrong over at Royal Bank of Canada said, it's really, really amazingly complex to simplify. Tez is like, you got to simplify to amplify. The universe is like saying, hey, you want to amplify TD? How do you simplify your message and go even deeper? That's what's percolating today in my heart and soul is how to amplify. And it might take some simplification over the next few months. And I'm not exactly sure yet what that is. But I told you this is going to be real talk conversations around the coffee table today about when I say what makes your soul sing, what are the things that you love to do, how are you going to amplify your message, and how do you maximize your impact? Perhaps one of those seven, air quotes, seven lessons that I have learned and extracted myself. 
I didn't share specifically what I was talking about in my keynotes, although I did allude to them and you've heard some of them in the last several episodes. I wanted to share the periphery because what I've learned is some of the juice, some of the nectar is outside of the actual center of the core of the delivery. So whether it be connecting with a dozen young men and women after chapel or talking to people at the social in the evening and hearing the feedback of, hey, man, you've been mentoring me for years and you didn't even know it. That's a beautiful thing. Or it's a sit down uh, lunch with the CEO who is sharing some of his or her wisdom from what they have gleaned from the last two decades of their career. I wanted to impart it today to you on today's episode, uh, all about seven lessons, seven keynotes in just about four plus weeks time. I hope that you found great, great value in today. I want you to think about those seven lessons and I want you to do something with them. What's the one or two or maybe even three that resonate with you? And what are you going to do about it? Maybe you could share it on your social media. Please share this episode. Share which one of these spoke to you out of the seven lessons. And I'm going to end today with the same way I started it. Because take one of those lessons and apply it today. Here are those three questions again. What gets your soul singing? Make sure your soul is singing. Two, how do you maximize your impact? What are you doing to maximize your impact today? Hopefully today's episode really fired you up to say, hey, this is what I'm going to do to amplify my message. Maybe it's you got to simplify to amplify. And the last one is, what are your top five gifts, skills, superpowers, or roles that you absolutely love doing? And then make sure that you simplify and do more of the things that you love to do that fire your heart and soul up so that you and this world could be a better place to live. My friends, thank you so much for listening today. I am so excited, if you can feel it in my voice, for what's coming up in just a few days as I record this, the shift retreat, shift happens. Yep. Shift happens, S-H-I-F-T, shift happens, believe it. So what are the shifts that you need to make in your life? Make them this week. I'm gonna recover. I'm gonna make sure that I come back stronger than ever, but get after it today. Go make some shift and happen. And uh, until next time, thank you for listening in. And remember, as always, train hard, eat right, live inspired, and go create impact. Shift happens, baby, let's roll. You, you thought I was done. No, I'm so fired up. Hey, I just want to share a quick glowing endorsement we got on iTunes. Uh, Five star rating and review from Hey Waldo. That's a great name. Hey Waldo, thank you for your endorsement on iTunes. Folks, please, as always, go over to Apple iTunes, give us a five star rating and write a review. This is what Hey Waldo said. (laughs) What life is really about. I'm a big time podcast listener for over a decade now, mostly educational and current events podcasts. A friend of mine shared Todd's podcast with me. Wow, exclamation point. Blown away by the interviews, raw truth, beautiful perspectives, and very inspiring. Need much more of this content in our world today, period. Hey, Waldo. Thank you for that. As always, thank you for all of your comments, my friends. Please give us those five-star ratings. Write those reviews. It really helps us on this meteoric rise we have on iTunes so that more people can listen to the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And as a friend recommended to Hey Waldo, the Todd Durkin Impact Show podcast, please recommend it to your friends, family, colleagues as well. Please post it on your social media. It helps all aspects. It helps the world be a better place. So go do it. Share it up. And uh, remember, shift happens, baby. Let's rock and roll. Make it a great day. Peace. God bless. I love you guys. Out.